When you have a quotient raised to a power, the rule we're going to use here is each thing on top and bottom both get raised to the power of n. So a in the numerator gets raised to the power of n and b in the denominator gets raised to the power of n. Of course, we, we can't divide by zero, so b can't be equal to zero. We're going to use this rule on this problem here. Both things that we have there are going to be raised to the power of two. So I have 12 squared and I have five squared. 12 squared is going to be 144. Five squared is 25. You can't reduce that fraction, so that would be your answer. It does say to simplify, which means you do want to evaluate in uh, both of those, and you shouldn't have exponents in your answer on these kind of problems. The next one, we have one third raised to the fifth power, which means we would have one to the fifth, and then we have 3 to the 5th. 1 to the 5th is 1. 3 to the 5th is 243. And that would be your answer for that one. Now this one, we have a power of 0. Now yes, you could raise both of these to the power of 0. Or we could also recognize that anything raised to the power of 0, regardless of what it is, is always going to be equal to 1. Now we still have a negative sign out front. Okay, so it means that your answer is just going to be negative one on this problem. Now, again, if you don't want to do it that way, you could have done it this way as well. You could raise both of them to the power of zero, but then you just get a one on top and a one on the bottom. And so you get negative one. So two different ways that you could do that. You could work it out this way by using that property that we just talked about. Or again, just recognize that anytime you have everything raised to the power of zero, that whole piece is going to turn into a one. But of course, we still have the negative sign outside, so that goes out front. So either way you want to do that one, answer is going to be negative one.